Hi, I'm Marlon Magdalena, Instructional Coordinator for Hamas Historic Site. This is going to be a brief overview of musical instruments of the Pueblo people. Now the first instrument that I'm going to talk to you about is the voice. It's something that we all use. We use it to communicate, to talk to one another, and we also use it to sing. Now many Pueblos have ceremonies that involve singing. And so we have to practice. We have to practice the songs. We have to memorize these songs. And so we practice using our voices. So we get them strong so that we're, they're loud and deep, just like how we want. Um, now the next common instrument I have right next to me is a drum. And there are many different types of drums. Uh, Pueblo drums uh, we're more familiar with are drums like this one here. Uh, this is a kind of a, a standard size. Some are larger, some are smaller. Uh, most of them are made out of aspen logs. The tops and the bottoms and the straps are made out of cow skin. You know, other animals, other large animals also work. Buffalo, deer, elk. And this is the drumstick. It's made out of a branch, made out of deer skin, uh, sometimes deer fur on the inside. And this is what it sounds like. Now there are many different types of beats depending on the, uh, the type of dance that's going on or the type of ceremony. Some are very slow, or some are very fast. Okay, so I'll demonstrate the drum and uh, my voice uh, in one of the songs that we have. There are many different songs. This is just going to be a short one. It's a buffalo dance song, uh, a welcome song. So very simple, very short, just to demonstrate the sounds of the drum and the sounds of the voice. Now the next instrument that I'm going to talk to you about is another type of drum. It's a very simple type of drum. All it is is a piece of leather, a piece of skin or hide from an animal. This came from a deer. It's wrapped together and tied together with rope. It could be leather or string or whatever you have. And this is the drumstick. It's made out of a branch and it's used to hit across the top. Very simple, but it does the job. It creates the sound, creates the beat. Now the next one is called a rasp. It is a stick with notches cut out of it, just like this here. And across the top, you put this here. This is, the, uh, this is a deer bone. And you go across the top just just like that. Okay. But we also use it with this gourd here. This is made out of a gourd. It's cut out on the top, made to look like a bowl. This goes on the ground. So when we use these, we're, on, we're kneeling down by this gourd. We put the rasp on top of the gourd. So what that's going to happen, or what that's going to do, is going to amplify the sound of the rasp. Because the rasp by itself, it isn't very loud. But when you put it on top of the gourd, it's going to amplify the sound as I'll demonstrate. Okay, so it amplifies that sound. Now the next instrument that I'll talk to you about is also made out of a board. It's a very common one. It's a rattle made out of a branch, a gourd here on top, and tiny stones on the inside. Very simple to use. You just hold it, you shake it just like that. Now this next one is a turtle shell rattle. And just like in the name, it's made out of a turtle shell. A hollow turtle shell here. On the top, you attach with leather deer hooves. And that's the sound that it makes. So in particular dances, we wear it on around our legs, right below the knee. And when we dance, it creates that sound. Okay. Very simple, very uh, nice sounding instrument. Now on to the next one. Now this instrument is very loud. As you can hear, it's made out of olive shells and it's attached to a strand or a cord or a piece of rope, whatever you have. And this olive shell has been cut on one end 
and been drilled to attach a cord. Okay. Now these don't come from around here. All the shells or any type of shells, they come from the ocean. There aren't any oceans around here in New Mexico or here in the Southwest. So people in the past had to trade for these things. Either trade with other communities that have been to the oceans where these come from, or we will have to go all the way to the ocean ourselves to get these objects, to get these materials. And they would bring them up here. Or well, if we're gonna trade, you know, people traded a lot in the past. We, we grew things, we grew corn, beans, and squash. Uh, we had a lot of obsidian, uh, made different types of pottery. So those were things that we could use as trade items. We would go to these other communities and trade for other things. Sometimes we would trade for these shells. Uh, parrot feathers were also very common. And copper bells, which is the next one I'm gonna to talk to you about. Now today we still use bells, except they're a little bit a uh, modern type. They're made out of modern metal, just like you see here. Now this one here is made to uh, be attached to the leg, right below the knee. Now in the past, when copper bells came out here, people liked them, because they made this particular sound. Now the civilizations down in Mexico, in Central America, or Mesoamerica, there's a lot of people there. They're able to figure out how to make copper bells. And so they came up with the shells, with the parrot feathers, following all these different trade networks and eventually arriving here in the Southwest where people got a hold of them, started using them because they traveled such a long way and because of what they represented. They came from a place where there's a lot of water, where there's a lot of moisture, from the rainforest to the oceans. Because here in the Southwest, water is very important to us because we're farmers. We grow things and we need anything that represents water for our ceremonies. It's very important to us. Now the next instruments that I'm going to talk to you about are flutes and whistles. Now I, I myself happen to be a flute maker and I made all of these flutes and, and whistles. So this first one I'm going to talk to you about, it's, uh, it's called a rim bloom flute. And there's some that are very long, like this one here. This one's 29 inches long. It's a very long instrument, as you can see. But it's called a rim blown because on the top, where the sound's made, it's very simple, very flat. All it is is a rim. And so what the player has to do, has to blow a certain way onto the rim to create a sound. And I'll demonstrate two different ways to play this instrument. Now the first way is called the side blowing, or the oblique blowing technique, where you're blowing to the side onto the rim. Now the next uh, technique is called the interdental technique. You put this edge in between your teeth to create the sound. to the next one. Now, this is also a rim blown flute except that it's only 13 inches long and it only has four holes and not six holes like that first one. But the techniques are the same. The first one is the oblique blowing technique or the side blowing technique. The next one is the interdental technique. Those are the rim blown flutes. Now the next flutes I'm going to talk to you about are made out of a different material. Those previous ones are made out of, are, can be made out of reeds or elderberry or different types of plants or trees. These next ones are made out of bone, eagle bone in particular. You could also use other birds of prey. Crane was also used. But these bones have specific type of rules nowadays. There's certain laws that allow me to have it. You have to be a member of a federally recognized tribe to own eagle bones or eagle feathers because we use them for religious purposes. Now these are two that I've made. Uh, you can see one's a little bit shorter, one's a little bit longer, but these are able to create different melodies at a higher pitch than some of those longer flutes. Now 
Now, as you can, as you heard, they're very loud. Uh, now, this next one is a whistle. It's also made out of eagle bone, but it only has one hole, as you can see here. Now, on the inside is a, a special type of glue made out of pinion sap mixed with charcoal or ashes. Now, you melt those two together, and it creates a very strong type of glue. And that's what's on the inside here. That's that black stuff that you can kind of see. Now, this whistle is meant to imitate different types of songbirds, especially now during the springtime, different types of birds are coming back from my, their migrations and, and it's getting warmer. So that's what this is used for, to imitate those birds. So that's the last instrument that I'm going to talk to you about today. Now, I hope you're able to learn something uh, about musical instruments. And thank you for watching this video about musical instruments of the Pueblo people.